I want to, I've enjoyed this this morning, but as you know, uh, this is not on TV. The public was not invited. Uh, it would be wonderful if we could have more debates. Uh, we, we've got plenty of time to have debates between now and November the 4th. I'm calling on Lamar Alexander to debate. The people of Tennessee need to know our views and our differing views and where do we agree? People need to know that. And without debates, that's not going to happen. So I call on Lamar Alexander uh, to debate me and I'll be available anywhere, anytime, any place. We need to do this debate across the state and we need to do it uh, live and on TV uh, so everybody in the state could see what, exactly where Lamar Alexander and I differ from each other. I thought Senator Alexander uh, did a workmanlike job uh, blaming everything on Harry Reid and, and President Obama, but I'm running against Lamar Alexander. I'm not running against President Obama. You talked about you have some problems with the Affordable Care Act, uh, paying for it, you mentioned. Uh, what about some of the kind of other key issues that have seen a lot of opposition? Uh, expansion of Medicaid, or among Republicans anyway, expansion of Medicaid uh, and the individual mandate. Are you in favor of both of those things? Can you just talk a little bit about the issue? I, I am certainly for the expansion of Medicaid in this state, and I, I, I talk, we talked a little bit about that uh, during, during the debate. There's 163,000 people in this state who are not insured. We're losing uh, about $2.4 million a day in federal funding. Uh, that's run up now to over two billion dollars. Uh, I was in Brownsville, Tennessee this summer when that hospital closed. Uh, and whether you believe that health care is a right or a privilege, uh, the economic sense in closing the Brownsville hospital made no sense to me. Uh, and uh, for the very fact that we've spent millions of dollars in an industrial park in Brownsville, Tennessee, and now we've closed the hospital. So I can't imagine that there's gonna be any uh, company relocate to Brownsville, Tennessee without a hospital. Uh, Governor Haslam and Lamar Alexander uh, have put, for, put forward no plan to uh, expand Medicaid or uh, work with the federal government in that regard. And Governor Alexander would say that that's a state issue and he's not involved but as a, as a United States Senator, you need to weigh in on those kind of issues. And, and, and quite frankly, uh, Bill Haslam is Governor Alexander's protege. So uh, I would think that Senator, or Senator Alexander, I would think that Senator Alexander should weigh in on that issue. Mr. Well, it seems like you're distancing yourself from the Democratic Party. How, what, how many voters who supported Carr in the primary do you think will come out in support of you in November? I don't think I'm distancing myself from the state Democratic Party. I think that, that I've said consistently, and, and I don't know if you've been with us throughout the whole time, throughout the primary, that I am a moderate Democrat. Uh, in fact, some, some Democrats tried to get me thrown off the ballot in, in the primary. Uh, I, I've always been true to what I, when I started, I said the same things that I'm saying now. I'm against Common Core, I was against, I'm against Amnesty, and those are the kind of two things that Joe Carr said and was for. I would hope his supporters would vote for me. I, I need all the votes I can get. I want to clarify your, your comments about Harry Reid. Did you say you would not vote for him? I will not vote for Harry Reid to be the next majority leader of the United States Senate. I said that from day one. And I wouldn't vote for Lamar Alexander either. <laughs> so, so. Let me ask you this. You were, you were uh, criticizing uh, the, uh, Senator Alexander and saying that, uh, suggesting that he had made uh, millions of dollars while he was in public office, mm -hmm. if I understood you correctly. What, uh, what, what examples do you? Well, let me give you one example. While he was uh, in public office, he, and it's an old example, Andy, but he, he invested $1 uh, in, uh, I think it was the Knoxville News Sentinel, but that, that group of papers. He invested one dollar, and eight months later he made six hundred and twenty thousand dollars. That's a pretty darn good investment by your friends. That's one example. Can you think of any more? Or? Uh, 
They invested five thousand uh, dollars in Corrections Corp uh, Corporation of America, uh, and put it in his wife's name. And later, uh, they made hundreds of thousands of dollars off that five thousand dollar investment. But it went through differing gyrations to get there. Going back to the Affordable Care Act, the individual mandate. We talk about that a little bit. Support opposition. The individual mandates to that all Americans carry health insurance. I think I think that any time any time you tell people that they have to do something, that rubs against the American way. But I believe that that all Americans deserve health coverage. And the only way to pay for, and we were in front with Farm Bureau insurance today, the only way to pay for that is that all Americans be involved and have some skin in the game. Well, Senator Alexander seemed this disputed that he was for amnesty and said, in fact, you were for amnesty. Um, <laughs> what, is, what is your specific position on, on illegal immigration when it comes to a path to citizenship? On the path to citizenship, I think we need to identify the either 12 million or 17 million people out there uh, and, and, and uh, make them pay taxes uh, and put them at the back of the line if they want to be citizens or they, they could just stay as a temporary worker if they want to stay as a temporary worker. So we can have a, work, a legal, workable, flexible workforce for agriculture and other industries. But if they want to be a citizen, they have to go to the back of the line. Well, I mean, it, it, isn't that in effect amnesty, giving them a, a you know legal path to doing that, regardless after having been here? Illegally? No, I, I, I don't think I, I don't think I don't think it is. They can they can make that choice. It's not a legal path to amnesty. It's it's not giving them rewarding them for breaking our laws. Eddie. So how does that contrast with what Senator Alexander voted for in the immigration bill? I think Senator Alexander gave them a path to a path to amnesty. I don't know that there's a great contrast uh, in in those two positions. I think he's for amnesty. I'm opposed to it. He would do it early. I would I would make people get to the back of the line. That's the difference. Looking back at uh, uh, Senator Alexander's last two terms, uh, foreign policy. Are there any votes that you look at and think that he voted wrong or? You know, kind of things that you you would have done differently, and kind of going forward, what are your right. kind of thoughts on foreign policy issues? I, I can go straight to one, uh, and that's I would have voted. We have a Republican congressman in in my district. He's my congressman, it's Jimmy Duncan. When Jimmy Duncan was asked to vote for the Iraq War, he met with Condoleezza Rice and and Colin Powell, and he asked them one question, two questions. One, was Iraq an imminent threat? And they couldn't tell him that Iraq was an imminent threat. Second question was how much it was going to cost. They couldn't tell him how much it was going to cost. My, con my Republican congressman voted against the Iraq war. I would have voted against the Iraq war. Ms. Ball, uh, we'll probably end this up, but I just uh, kind of, Last thing from you about you were addressing farmers from across the state here. What's the message you want to give to the rural people of Tennessee about why you should be the candidate or should be uh, the senator for Tennessee? Well, Lee, I, I think I think the, the the short message is that that I have all I'm a I'm a rural person. I grew up uh, in a one bedroom house trailer on the banks of the Pigeon River. I know what it's like to be to be poor, right? And 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 work every day, and and I am in favor of public education, which I think is the key to keeping our young farmers at home and and working with them. And quite frankly, Lamar Alexander's been in the the uh, uh, United States Senate for 12 years, and I've said it twice today. If you want to continue. Uh, if you like what's in Washington, you need to keep Lamar Alexander. If you don't, we need to change the people in Washington, D.C.